today's students. My name is Abadali Abraham. This program is brought to you by IC Humanitarian Foundation. Now we are looking at the topics of the class, which is nuclear chemistry. Nuclear chemistry. So um, now what is nuclear chemistry? Nuclear chemistry is simply just a branch of chemistry that investigates the phenomena or the happenings in the nucleus as well as the energy changes that accompany such phenomena. What do I mean? What do I mean by that? Now, we look at distinction between nuclear, nuclear reaction and chemical words and chemical reaction. Now, in nuclear reaction, atoms of one substance, atoms of one substance are converted into atoms of another substance. Why a chemical reaction, atoms of one substance are not converted into atoms of a different substance. That is, atoms are conserved. Now, a simple illustration of this is, if you look at the reaction, sodium plus chlorine. Sodium plus chlorine can never give you calcium chloride. Never. It can never give you calcium chloride. It will definitely, this is wrong. This is what? Wrong. Sodium plus chlorine, we invariably gives you sodium chloride, which means that atom here, atom was, atom here was neither created nor destroyed. So in that case, atom is conserved. Why in nuclear chemistry, this is uranium 235 92 plus one neutron. This will give you here, this will give you uranium 236 92. Now giving you cryptic, which is here. 32, 92, this is 36, 92, plus barium, and 3 watts, 3 neutron. So this will give you 92, 92 plus this, that's uh, 95. 236 minus 95, so this will give you 1 here, this is 13, here this will give you 151, and this place will give you, this is 92 minus 36, so this will be um, 8, 12, 6, this is 5. So this will give you 56. Now when you look at this reaction here, when you look at this reaction, the real 2 through 6 has translated into entirely different atom, which implies that atom of one substance are converted into atom of another substance in nuclear reaction, or the chemical reaction that is that. Two, in nuclear reaction, there is a sizable, there is a sizable or seismic change in mass leading to the evolution of considerable amount of energy. While in chemical reaction, the change in mass is immeasurable. As a consequence, little energy is evolved. What do I mean by that? In chemical reaction, the energy involved in chemical reaction can is tractable. It can be managed. Just little amount of energy is liberated during chemical reaction. But in nuclear reaction, nuclear reaction is just one reaction that cannot be performed ordinarily in the laboratory. There are critical precautions that must be observed. Why? Because of the energy involved in the process. And this energy that is involved in the process is being enormously high. If it is not well regulated, it can prove dis disastrous. So in that case, in, chemical, in nuclear reaction, there is a sizable or huge change in mass as a result huge, large amount of energy is liberated. Why in chemical reaction, there is negligible change in mass, leading to the evolution of little heat. The another thing again is that, in nuclear reaction, rate is unaffected by conditions such as temperature, pressure, concentration, catalyst, etc. Why in chemical reaction, rate is hugely influenced by such factors as, Catalyst, temperature, pressure, concentration. Now, what does that mean? It means that if we hanker to perform a chemical reaction, for instance, between hydrogen, chlor hydrogen chloride and ammonium, to give you ammonium chloride, to enhance the rate of this reaction, it is either we add more of HCl or more of ammonia. By virtue of doing that, we have increased the concentration. Consequently, there is an exponential increase in rate. But in nuclear reaction, whether the temperature is high or low, a radioactive element will continue decay without ceasing. So those physical factors that affect 
chemical reaction do not determine the rate of nuclear reaction. So, um, four orbital electrons are involved in chemical reaction. While here, nucleons such as protons and neutrons are involved in the reaction. So, which means that in nuclear reaction, we have only particles in the what in the nucleus participating in the reaction. And what are those particles in the nucleus? We have the proton and we have the what the neutron. Then why in chemical reaction it is only a beta electron which has been demonstrated in chemical bonding. Now that is that. Then we go to radioactivity. Now the concept of radioactivity was introduced by a French physicist Anthony Henry Banquere. Then, however, it was then it was then exhaustively investigated by a doc his doctoral student Mary Sklodowska Kure with her husband who discovered the phenomenon and denominated it as what? Radioactivity. Hence, radioactivity is defined as the spontaneous disintegration of an unstable element to emit particles such as alpha or beta and or electromagnetic radiation. Now, what does that mean? Radioactive decay Radioactivity is defined as the spontaneous decay. Spontaneous means that it occurs without any external aid. Look at I'm giving a component analysis. We say it is defined as the spontaneous disintegration of the decay of an unstable nuclide, leading to the emission of particles, e.g., alpha or beta, and or electromagnetic radiation with the evolution of energy. So in that case, spontaneous, as I've said, means that it occurs without external aid. Decay implies it disintegrates or breaks up into new species. Then, particles here implies alpha or beta. Alpha or beta, they are regarded as particles. Why gamma ray is regarded as an electromagnetic radiation. Now, we now look at types of types of radioactive decay types of radioactive types of radioactive emission types of radioactive what emission now the three radioactive rays we have alpha beta and gamma were actually discovered by Frederick Sobi Kures that's the Maria Perry Kure and as well as Ernest Rudersford and his co-worker Frederick Sodi especially and the Sudafon and Frederick Sodi postulated that three kinds of radioactive rays exist. The first which is called the alpha what? The alpha particles. The alpha particles. Now, we look at the characteristics. Very simple. Now, the first thing we look at is, we look at number one, nature. Nature. An alpha ray is a stream of positively charged particles comprising of helium nucleus. By notation, it is represented as helium with a superscript 4 and subscript what? 2. The superscript 4 denotes the mass number and the subscript denotes the word the atomic number. So alpha rays consist of positively charged particles comprising helium nucleus with a mass of 4 and a charge of plus 2. Therefore, it is by notation, it is represented as helium, superscript 4, and number 2. That is the nature. Then we look at number 2, velocity. Velocity. Alpha particles travel at a speed, one tenth speed of light. Alpha particles travel at a speed, one tenth speed of light. Then 2, ionization. Ionization of gases. Alpha particles cause serious ionization of gases due to their very small size. Then the next one is penetration power. Penetration, penetration power. Owing to their large size, alpha particles have a very low penetrating power. As a consequence, they are readily absorbed by a sheet of paper. Then the next one is Action on zinc sulfide and photographic plate. Action on zinc sulfide and what? Photographic what? Action on zinc sulfide and photographic plate. 
alpha particles affect photographic plates and as well as zinc sulfide, exciting scintillations or momentary flashes of light. Then the next one is deflection. Deflection in EM field. Alpha particles are deflected in an electromagnetic field. Perhaps they are attracted to the negative plates of an electric field, of an electric field indicative of the fact that they are positively charged. Then we go to the next one, which is better particles. Better particles. Now, better particles, better particles. Characteristics. Characteristics. Now, first, nature. Better particles are a stream of negatively charged electrons. Better particles are a stream of negatively charged electrons. By notation, they are symbolized E superscript zero, subscript minus one. That's the symbol of beta particle. Then two, velocity. Beta particles travels at a speed 33 to 99% speed of light. Beta particles travels at a speed of about 33 to 99% speed of light. Then, three, with that for the velocity, three, ionization of gases. Ionization of gases. Beta particles produce comparatively weak ionization of gases relative to what? Relative to alpha particles. Then, penetration power. Four, penetration power. Penetration what? Power. Beta particles possess relatively high penetrating power than alpha particles. And that is, as a consequence, they are readily stopped or arrested or absorbed by metals of several millimeters thickness. Then, we talk about the next one, deflection in an electromagnetic field. Beta particles are readily deflected in an electromagnetic field owing to their light nature. In other words, they are attracted to the negative, to the positive plate of an electric field, which demonstrates the fact that they are, negati they are negatively charged. Therefore, they are attracted to the positive plate of an electric world field. The action on zinc sulfide and photographic plate. Beta particle has neglig exact negligible effect on zinc sulfide. However, they strongly affect photographic what? Plates. Then we look at gamma. Gamma rays. Nature. Number one, nature. Gamma ray is typically an electromagnetic radiation. Then, two, velocity. Gamma ray travel at exactly the speed of light, which is about 2.9997 times 10 to 8 meter per squared second. Approximately 3.0 times 10 to 8 meter per square second. Then we talk about ionization of gases. They have the least ionization when they travel through air. They produce the least ionization when they travel through air. Penetrating power. They have maximum penetrating power in comparison to alpha and beta particles respectively. As a consequence, they are only arrested or absorbed by heavy metals of several thickness, e.g. lead or barium, lead foil, lead metal or barium. Then, deflection electromagnetic field. When they route or trail through an electromagnetic field, they remain unaffected, which is indicative of the fact that they are electrically neutral. That is, they do not possess any charge. Therefore, they are neither deflected towards the positive plate nor the negative plate. And a simple diagram to note that this is the lead block. This is a simple diagram. This is a lead block. So this positive, this negative here. So, so we have this one here. We have this one here. Now, if you look at this, this is positive plate. So for this ray to be deflected on the positive plate, it means, remember, light charges repel or light charges attract. So in that case, for this one to be attracted towards the negative plate, 
That implies that here, this man must be what? Alpha particle. This man must be alpha. Which means alpha is positively charged. The reason is attracted to the negative plates. Now, here, this positive plates, and this man is reflected towards it. Therefore, this man here is what? This man here is what? Negatively charged. So this is what? Better. And this man that traveled undeflected or unaffected, this gamma indicates for the fact that it is what? Electrically neutral. Then the next thing is that if you look at the penetration power, this is paper, this is aluminum foil, then this is this is lead. Now, they look at this. Yeah. Now this is paper sheet. This aluminum foil. This lead gun. So you can see that the upper particle could only be absorbed by the paper sheet. Why the better? Why better particle? Why better particle is absorbed by aluminum foil and gamma? Is absorbed by heavy what? Heavy metal. Now, that is all. Then we go to types of radioactive decay. We have talked about types of radioactive emission, so we we'll go to types of what? Radioactive decay. Now, we recognize three kinds of radioactive decay. We have what is known as the alpha decay. Now, in alpha decay, alpha decay is just a simple way to know element that is in alpha decay. Alpha decay is exhibited by heavy elements. In general, elements with atomic number greater than with atomic number greater than 82. That is elements heavier than lead and as well as fewer lighter elements exhibit alpha decay. So in a nutshell, any element whose atomic number is above that of lead always exhibits alpha what decay or undergo alpha decay. So in alpha decay, this is what happened. In alpha decay the atomic number, this is for example, let me use uranium 235, 235, 92, exhibiting alpha decay. This is alpha particle. So this is the daughter nuclide. The daughter nuclide. Now, 235 minus 4. Now, in, in order to understand this, you must understand balancing of nuclear equation. You know, just as in chemical reaction, the sum of the sum of the masses of the reactants. Before reaction must equal the sum of the masses of the what the product after what reaction. The same thing applies to what to nuclear reaction. In nuclear reaction, the sum, the sum of the atomic number of the daughter nuclide must equal the sum of the what of the mass number of the parent nuclide. On the other hand, the sum of the atomic number of the daughter nuclide must equal the sum of the atomic number of the parent nuclide. So in that case, if the atomic nuclide there, the total sum of the atomic nuclide on this left hand side is 235, then that means to get this side is 235 minus what? 4. And 235 minus 4, that will give you 23 what? 231. And then here, 92 minus 2, that will give you what? 90. So evidently, we can call or extrapolate two vital information from this dab, from this illustration. The first is that the atomic number of the daughter nuclei decreases by a unit of two, as evident in the diagram. The white mass number, as written in the supersmart, decreases by a unit of what? By a unit of four. So whenever element exhibits alpha decay, the next thing that happens is what? Is that the mass number decreases by a unit of four, and it, why the atomic number decreases by a unit of what? Two. And they are always exhibited by element whose atomic number is greater than that of what? Lead 82. Atomic number 82. Then the second decay we have is beta decay. Now, in beta decay, in beta decay, beta decay is a form of decay which leads to the ejection of a beta particle, although not originally present in the nucleus. Now look at what, look at the simple magic or chemical transmutation that occurs in the nucleus here. Here, in beta decay, a proton, this is proton, with a mass of one and a charge of one, giving you a what? Turning into a neutron, which remains in the plus one zero, and now look at this. One, one plus zero, one. Zero, mi zero minus one, zero minus 
please. Sorry. Neutron. So this is one proton. So one plus zero, one. One minus zero, zero. So why how does beta decay occur? Beta decay occur due to the transformation of a neutron present in the nucleus into a what? A proton which is retained in the nucleus and electron which is liberated. So now here, the proton here, which is retained in the nucleus, leads to the increment of leads to the increment of the atomic number by a unit of what? One. For instance, you know two three five. Look at you know two three five ninety two, giving you beta. So this will give you. Look at the delta nuclei. Two three five minus zero give you what? Two three five. Ninety two minus one give you what? Ninety two. This will give. Here will give you ninety what? Ninety three. Ninety three minus one give you what? Ninety two. So if you look at here, there's an increment in what in atomic number. Why? Because of the creation of the what of a proton which remains in the nucleus. And finally, we talk about gamma what decay. Gamma de decay occurs as a result of the admission of gamma rays when the nucleus is said to be in excited state. In a nutshell, gamma emission accompanies alpha decay or beta decay. Now, we we'll go to the next part, which is referred to as kinetics of kinetics of radioactivity. Kinetics of radioactivity. Kinetics of radio what radioactive decay. Kinetics of radioactive decay. Now, under this kinetic of radioactive decay, we look at decay what? Decay constant. Decay what? Constant. Now, when we do talk about decay, decay rate, please. Decay rate. Now, what is meant by decay rate? Decay rate, as we all know, rate simply means a change in a physical quantity with respect to time. Now, decay rate simply means a change in the number of radioactive nuclei present divided by what? Time. That is, decay rate giving us equal to n over what? T. We take, we label this as equation one. Now, according to the result of experiment, it has been noted that the rate of a radioactive decay is proportional the rate of radioactive decay is proportional to the number of radioactive nuclei present. That is, rate of radioactive decay, which is the decay rate, which is A, proportional to the number what present. So take this as equation what? As equation 2. Removing this constant proportionality, we have to be A equal to K what? A. Equation what? Equation 2. Where K is a constant, known as decay constant. Now, here, integrating and um, combining equation 1 and 2, we have that decay rate is equal to what? Minus n over what? T equal to what? Equal to Kf. Now, the reason we introduce minus sign here is because the number of radioactive nuclei is what? Is decreasing. And because that number is decreasing, the change in the number of nuclei here is delta n, please. This is delta n here. Now remember that since the number of nuclei is increasing, if we look, if we check delta n, that is n2 minus what? n1. n1 is larger than n2. So if you subtract, it will give you a negative word value. And in science, we do not acquiesce in negativity. Therefore, to eliminate the, the, the chances of having negative value, we introduce the word, a negative sign to help neutralize that negative, to help neutralize the negative value here. So in that case, we have it to be decay rate, decay rate is equal to negative delta n over t equal to what kn. Now when we integrate when we integrate this for respect to time we have to be in n in n naught all over what nt equal to k1 kt. Now which means that this in n naught means the number of reactive nuclei present at time t equal to zero that is at start of experiment. Why nt means the number of radioactive nuclei present after some time, t. Then k is our decay constant. Then yt here is the time. So in that case, this, if, this equation can as well be translated as in nt over what? n naught equal to minus what? Minus kt. Now, the minus here is, is due to the fact that n naught is bigger than nt. So when you divide and get the a, the link, 
it will give you a negative value. Do you understand? So if you give a negative value here, this negative sign here, it cancels the negative sign here. But if you put it this way, in n over nt, you have a positive value. So there's no point putting minus here. So these are the two ways in which you can express your decay what? Your decay rate. Then we'll talk about half-life. We we'll talk about half-life. Now, what we say half-life? Half-life is simply half-life represented as t half is defined as the time taken for half of for a given point of a radioactive element to reduce to half of its original amount. The time taken for a given point of a radioactive element to reduce to half of its original amount is regarded as half-life and it is denoted as what? T what? Half. Now, to derive the, for, for, uh, the equation of half-life, take this as equation what? Equation 3. Then, this one is equation what? Equation 4. Now, let T, let T equal to what? T half. Now, if T is equal to T half, then that means our N naught, our N, our N T will be what? N naught over what? 2. Remember, I told you that this means the number present after the original amount has reduced to what? Half. So in that case, if we substitute this into equation what? 4. What do we have? We have it to be in N naught all over N naught over what? 2. Equal to K, instead of KT, I will let T equal to T half. T what? Half. So this is called N in N naught times 2 over what? N what? Naught. So N naught cancel N naught. We have it to be KT half. So what we have? We have it to be in what? In 2 equal to KT what? Half. So we will give you T half equal to in 2 over what? K. Which will give you 0.693 over what? Over K which is your decay constant. So which means here, your half-life here is measured in what? In seconds or hours, depending on the time unit. Then we'll talk about radiation detector. We have different instruments that can be used in detecting radiation. We have one known as the proportional counter. We have one known as the scintillation counter. We have one known as the bubble chamber method. Then we have what is called the spark chamber method. Then we have what is known as the semiconductor detector. And then we have another one which is called the Winston Cloud Chamber. Then we have the Seroconf Counter. Then we also have another one again, which is known as Photographic Emulsion Detector. So these are the various instruments employed in detection of radioactive radiations.